Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley and this awesome video came out of a battle between the Greenskins and Bretonia. So I'm going to be doing a separate video on my impressions over all of the video, um, but just know that it looks super awesome. Be sure to check it out for yourself. It's great to see the units actually uh, you know, up close and personal, and especially the battlefield itself has me super, super excited. Anyways, what they do is they show us a bit of the Greenskin army, and then they transition over and they show us some of the Bretonian units, which we haven't seen before. So this is really cool stuff. Now, of course, you guys know that these guys have not, and I repeat, have not been announced as a playable faction. However, there's a lot of speculation that they will come out as the first free LC or DLC faction mostly because as humans they're going to be very easy to create based off the uh, empire unit skins and uh, skeletons so th that you know I'd put money on that but anyways so we got an introduction to some of the Bretonian units there the first one that we're going to be seeing here is these uh, mounted yeoman uh, cavalrymen so these are not the full knights of Bretonia still they look pretty sweet up close decently well armored uh, but nothing too much to it. These are going to be low ranking units who were able to afford knights and uh, some of them here and there do have some nice helmets on. Uh, I'm looking mostly at the guy on the bottom left. Their um, stats are okay. Mostly they seem to be a light shot cav, almost like a Sarmatian Lancer or something like that. Uh, very swift units. Um, just here I decided to compare the stats. So uh, the units we're talking about Bretonia here are the Mounted Yeoman. And I compare them to the Orc Boar Boys and Goblin Wolf Rider Archers. So overall, they have 60 men compared to the Boar Boys, which also have 60, but the Wolf Riders have 80. Um, they have lower armor than the Boar Boys, but higher than the Wolf Riders. Speed, they're at 90 versus the Wolf Riders at 95. Um, Boar Boys are at six, uh, 58. So these mounted Yemen are definitely meant to be very quick. Charge bonus is 22, which is actually lower than the Boar Boys. I was kind of surprised to see that. Although they do have uh, the mounted Yemen have better melee stats uh, and defense stats once they're already in combat. So that's pretty interesting. I don't quite know how speed and mass factors into charge bonus and all that like we saw in Attila. That's something we're going to have to wait to see. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's great to see the first of the Bretonian shock cavalry. That's what they're all about is these huge numbers of mounted cavalry. What I decided to do is break down a charge for you. We got to see a little bit of a glimpse for it. So it definitely looks devastating. You can see them bowling over a lot of these orcs, both of them charging at each other. Straight line. This is almost the best charge you could imagine. And so I kind of wanted to quantify, okay, what are we what are we dealing with here? What is the type of damage to be expected? So I went ahead and kind of did a freeze frame of the orc boar boys before and after the charge. You can see this initial charge only really knocked out um, a couple of their men in the unit, mostly dealing HP damage, but even that didn't really do that much to the orc boys. Now, presumably in sustained combat, if you um, were to compare the stats from previous slide to this one, I think the mounted yeoman uh, might win out in this combat, but from the charge, they seem to be doing okay. So what I assume you're going to need to do as the Bretonian knights is going to be doing cycle charges. Although, again, this is going to be their low class uh, light cav, I assume the Grail Knights and units like that are going to be doing much more punishing charges, um, but we didn't get to see much of that. The next unit I wanted to spotlight is going to be the Trebuchet. These look awesome, and I particularly like the fact that the little um, bricks that they're throwing there are no longer kind of shaped circular cannonball looking uh, bricks. Uh, they more look like pieces of walls um, that they're throwing. So I went ahead and highlighted those. So those look really cool. It reminded me out of uh, the scene out of Lord of the Rings. Um, where the uh, Minas Tirith is shooting at the orcs and then one lands next to, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? The butt face orc, <laughs> and he just spits on it. Um, but yeah, it, it, these trebuchets definitely look very cool. Um, seems like they have sniper-like abilities, which is kind of what we've come to expect for most of our artillery pieces. The range seemed to be pretty good. So I went ahead and pulled up the stats for them. So you can see them here up close on the right looking beautiful. They look awesome. The stats for them on the left, they have a range of 420, 22 ammunition. And uh, decent stats. Leadership is pretty high for them. I compared them to the Hellstorm Rockets. So um, leadership is comparable. The rest of the stats, you know, weapon strength, defense, not really much there. Uh, the main difference is going to come with the range. So the Hellstorm Rocket Battery from the Empire is going to have a range of 480. And the missile damage for the Hellstorm rocket battery is going to be 256. 
Um, and I'm surprised I actually to see the Hellstorm rocket battery has 75 ammo as opposed to the Trebuchet's 22. Now, the Hellstorm rocket battery is probably going to be super expensive, 350 coins uh, right through there. Um, but we don't really see how much the field trebuchet uh, costs for upkeep because that unit card on the left was from the battle and the one on the right for the Hellstorm rocket battery was taken from the campaign. So we don't really have to, you know, much to see for uh, those two. Although I do assume that the um, catapults are going to be much less, or sorry, the trebuchets are going to be much less expensive. The Hellstorm rocket battery is, uh, as they say there, from the Imperial uh, Armory. So you imagine it's going to be expensive. Next, we get to see some of the heroes. So here is going to be Fay Le Fay, which is a wizard. So she's a spellcaster, and we see her running into combat on her horse. I assume you can get other mounts for her as well. I wonder what the Bretonian um, cavalry was going to be like. I think some of them can get a like Pegasus uh, and things like that. So that will be sweet. But anyway, she rides into combat here. Has a lot of health. Not very good armor. Pretty good speed. Mostly weapon strength is just sky high. That's what to expect from these heroes. Um, but mostly she's going to be a spellcaster. Now we didn't get to see too much in the way of her spells. Although I'll be showing you a little bit of one of the ones she cast. So right there on the right, you may have missed it. It's a um, uh, almost like a cone of cold that she shot out. So I <laughs> took the liberty of tracing it tracing it out over you and she has an area of attack there that kind of freezes the area and in the video they said how she kind of whiffed the unit a little bit but that is a that can take huge chunks out of the enemy um, so that is pretty cool that she can run around and do these uh, directional attacks that take certain amounts of skill for the shot and the timing uh, and if you took a closer look at the video itself there was a wind up time uh, from when she activated she started to glow so presumably um, you know maybe you'll freeze your character once you start to give an attack move with that um, magic ability and then units can try and scuttle uh, out of the way. I also decided to highlight uh, Al Noemi Sho, which is an armored and shielded hero from Bretonia. We didn't really see any close-ups of, of him. I just grabbed this really, really quickly for his banner. Um, but look at him, much higher armor than Fey Le Fey. He's got much better melee and uh, melee attack and melee defense stats. His weapon strength is equally very high and he has a high charge bonus. So assume he's going to be like a knight. Then over here towards the end of the battle, we see a really cool scene with the uh, greenskins with their giant choppas chasing after some of the uh, Bretonian halberdiers. I'm going to rewind a little bit to the earlier part of the battle here where we see them in nice formation with their halberds uh, cheering. So they look in better order here, a bit more impressive, uh, that's for sure. Their stats, I decided to pull them up. They have bonuses, armor piercing, anti-large, and charge defense against all units. So very good for holding the line, which is going to be good. Um, they have 120 men per unit, and then their stats are somewhat okay. Uh, we can compare them to Swordsmen from the Empire and two of the Orc units. So across the board, uh, armor is going to go to the Orc big guns, followed by the Swordsmen and the Men-at-Arms, which are tied. And then the Orc boys are actually lower. Uh, leadership is going to be pretty much even across the board. The Swordsmen from the Empire actually have the highest leadership. Speed is going to be pretty even amongst them. Melee attack. Um, Definitely favoring the orcs um, and the melee attack of the swordsman actually being the highest of all of them. Melee defense, again, it's going to be going to... Uh, oh no, it looks like it's actually for the Empire and Bretonia. So, interesting to compare all these. Charge bonus for the halberd, halberds is just super low. Same for the swordsman. Um, the orcs have 24 and 18, so pretty good weapon strength there. Going to be really high for the orc big guns. Um, so, yeah, interesting to, to just take a look at that. The last unit that we saw from Bretonia is going to be these Peasant Bowmen. We didn't really see any up-close shots, uh, but I decided to highlight over them. They seem to be kind of run-of-the-mill, cheap crap units. Um, comparatively to the Crossbowmen from the Empire and the Orc Error Boys, take a look at range. The Peasant Bowmen are tied with the Crossbowmen from the Empire, and both of those outrange the Orc counterparts, which is interesting. The Peasant Bowmen from Bretonia have the highest damage at 30 versus 22 and 22. They also have the highest ammunition at 53 versus 35 and 35. So takeaway there is the Peasant Bowmen, I assume, are going to be the cheapest. They have the highest melee damage and they have the most ammunition. So I think the idea here is for them to be, you know, shooting constantly throughout the battle, hiding behind 
a wall of halberdiers and mostly just picking apart the enemy while the cavalry keeps cycle charging into them. So that is going to be a very interesting strategy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that the peasant bowmen are in here. Uh, I was hoping they'd have a little larger unit to compensate for the fact that they're so weak, but I'm sure we'll see more. Anyways, that's it for this video. That is the most that I could get out of the unit stats for Bertonia. There is going to be additional content for sure in the days to come, and also I'll be showing my impressions. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.